Okay, sorry guys, I'm a little late. Um, just making sure everything's working right here on my end. I'll turn off my speaker on my laptop. Okay, I see that I'm on there now. Hello everybody. Okay, we're going to have some big fun today. Um, and I'm going to have some messy fun on my end here. Um, I don't even know where to begin because there's so much stuff. Um, let me see here. I'm going to make sure I can see my comments. Good morning, or good afternoon, I should say. See, that's where my mindset is. Deb and Wendy, and Jennifer, Tammy, Paula, Sunny. All you guys. Cool. Nancy, hi. Okay. Um, so, if you guys uh, don't know, or maybe you, maybe you do, I haven't been doing this very long, just a couple of weeks. I tried um, paint pouring a couple of years ago, but just on canvas. And I wasn't real thrilled with the results that I got, but, um, you know, I didn't stick with it. So, you know, it's like anything. The more you stick with stuff, the better you get at it. But I got to um, thinking that these might make, the paint pour stuff might make good pendants or other types of jewelry. Um, but, you know, guys, there is so much information out there about paint pouring and everybody has um, different recipes, different ideas, different purposes. Um, so, you know, it, it, what I'm doing here is just like the tip of the iceberg. Uh, if it's something that kind of piques your interest, there's a ton of information out there that you can investigate. Um, and, and it doesn't have to be for jewelry. I just was trying to uh, work it in, you know, that that it, it has something to do with what we do, you know, something related to what we do. But um, any art form is cool, you know. It, it, it's just, um, and the paint pouring is so mesmerizing when you watch all the colors, you know, start to, to, uh, blend and and mix into each other um it it's just i could watch it like all day long so you know it's just uh it's just kind of a neat neat thing i am um like i said just discovering uh the tip of the iceberg here so hi d um so you know i hope you can get something beneficial out of it uh, if nothing else, it's good, messy, fun, and creative. Um, my grandson's going to be coming over here in a couple hours, and I know I've got a big uh, batch of uh, stuff ready for him to play with, and he's he's going to just love it. So if you have kids or grandkids or anybody, you know, can can have a lot of fun with this. So I'm going to start by showing you uh, what I have done. And these are just a few um, that could be pendants. Uh, I, I used a bezel cup for, I'm not a bezel cup, a, a pre-made uh, metal bezel for this one. Um, and then the other ones are just, the paint is just directly on the metal. And then I put, um, well, I put a coat of resin on all of them um, to seal them. This one I didn't put a hole in. It was just kind of one of the first ones I was experimenting with. Um, and I I don't think I would um, actually try to put a hole in this now because I'd probably crack the resin. But this could be a fun thing to put uh, with prong settings or wire wrap. You could do something like that um, with a piece that doesn't have any holes in it. But my primary focus with the paint pouring is not on acrylic canvases, like the majority, well, I guess all of it really is, um, well, no, I, I shouldn't say that. The majority is on canvas for art that you want to hang on your walls, which is cool if you want to do that. 
um, with, with these methods, you can certainly accomplish that. But my focus, like I said, was to make something that I could use in jewelry making. So there is what uh, is known as skins, paint skins, that you can use and cut up. This is a skin right here. This is one of the paint pours that has dried um, on a silicone mat. And then you can cut this up and put it inside uh, pre-made bezels if you want. Uh, uh, there's a lot more to investigate. I just haven't had the time to do it. But I was even thinking, you know, that maybe somehow you could um, put this in a in a cuff, you know, if you had like a channel cuff, you could cut a strip and put that in there and then resin around it, that that might be kind of a cool thing. Um, but on these skins, after they've dried, then what I do is I apply um, a spray, like a, an acrylic varnish spray on them. Because one of the items that I use um, in the mix with my paints is silicone and silicone is oily so you want to seal all of that so that you can add your resin on top if you have oil on top the resin is going to pull away you're not going to be able to to uh, accomplish that okay so it's it's a, a you know multi-step process nothing is difficult about it but it takes time um, when I do the paint pours, it takes at least two full days, uh, maybe three, to, to actually get the skin where you can peel it off of the silicone mat, okay? So um, that's something to consider. This is not something that's going to be done, you know, in an afternoon. It's going to be a little bit of a process. So, um, so I'm going to show you a variety of different ma uh, materials. Uh, there, like I said, uh, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos in the last couple of weeks and, uh, people's processes are different. The materials they use are different. All I could say is that, um, I would watch a handful of them and kind of come to your own conclusion as far as what appeals to you and how you want to use this. Um, so I'm probably going to be jumping all over the place because I'm, I'm not really sure how to present it totally, but I'll start by some of the ingredients that you need, some of the different things. Um, and I have a handout as always, and it is fairly comprehensive and it's got all the names of everything of the products that you need. Um, so you can refer to that. You don't have to be writing that stuff down right now unless you want to um and uh let's go with that all right so like i said i've got a bunch of stuff everywhere okay all right so i'm gonna start off with paints and if you watch some of the youtube videos uh, there's a lot of artist people out there uh, who paint, they use good paints. Um, I have seen a few people mention just everyday craft paint. Some people use house paint, uh, latex house paint as a base, like the white, like a can of white. I'm not getting that into it. Uh, but for people who do a lot of this and sell big paintings and things, I can understand why. Uh, because it's probably more cost effective to, to do it that way. But anyway, so I have, I'm going to move the camera down and I'm going to show you the products that I have. These are paints that I bought at um, Joanne Fabrics or Michaels, both places probably. Uh, a variety of colors. I have a larger container of white. This is all latex craft paint. Um, so you need that for sure, uh, a variety of colors. You need little mixing cups. These I bought on Amazon and they are the medicine cups. So they have 
the markings, excuse me, on them. Um, if you if you want to uh, to use something like that, you can use the ones that aren't marked as well. I, I've come to the conclusion that this is not a precise science. Um, there are people that weigh and measure every bit of their um, materials. And if you wanted to do that and you have a little scale, you can put your um, little cup on your scale and weigh out. That's that's going to be your most precise mix. But um, a lot of people eyeball theirs too. And you know me, I'm all about eyeballing. So that works for me just fine. But you could get a small scale and um, what is really important in being precise is when you do the resin. So you have to have equal portions of that uh, to, uh, to have the resin cure properly. If you have one more of one than the other, they're not going to cure properly. It's always going to be sticky. There's nothing in the world that you can do to resurrect that. It's just not going to happen. That's with the two-part resin. Uh, in my demonstration today, I am using UV resin because it's quick and I have that on hand and you can see the results fairly quickly with that. Um, I will say with the UV resin, you have to really, really make sure that your, um, your skin is sealed properly because if it's not, if you don't have enough of the acrylic spray around the edges, it's going to pull, that UV resin will pull away, and it, it's kind of hard to um, correct that. But I, I have tackled it, but it, it takes a little bit more um, effort to do that. If you use the two-part resin, you don't have that problem. So that's just a little tip there. Okay, so... So you've got your resins, you've got, I mean, you've got your paints. Um, you need some craft sticks. I like both sizes, um, just regular popsicle sticks, craft sticks, the regular size. Um, I also like these little short ones. They're like a half size. Uh, I just find that they're a little bit easier to mix in these tiny little cups because they don't fall out like, well, this one isn't, but sometimes they do fall out and flip your paint. So the little ones are nice, but the, you know, you don't have to have them. It's just, I had them on hand, so I'm using them. Okay, so you need craft sticks. You will need some painter's tape, and I will show you how I'm gonna use that. You will need a product called Floetrol. This is, I know it's backwards. Uh, it is made by Flood. It's Floetrol. I bought this, I believe, at Home Depot. You can get it on Amazon, but you're going to pay a lot more for it. So if you have a home improvement store uh, in your area, check that out. Um, you'll need, I think this is a quart, yeah, this is a quart jar. You'll need this, okay? This is a uh, paint medium that we're going to mix our paints with. I'll explain all that as we go along. That's the basic of what you need. Maybe a little bit of distilled water if your paints are thick, but actually the Floetrol will probably thin them out enough. Okay, just showing you things that could you could need. Uh, I also have a recipe for a homemade pour, uh, paint pouring medium. Uh, and I have um, that also on the handout, but I'm going to make some of that uh, in front of you so you can see that as well. Um, that is more stuff than this, okay? There is glue in here. There is a product called Liquitex Flow Medium in there. And um, I can't think of what else right now. Let me see my notes here. Well, that's it. The, it's it's the, the Elmer's Glue All Floetrol Liquitex Flow Aid and some spring water or bottled water, distilled water, whatever. Um, some people swear by the, the homemade method, and I've sent, I've put um, YouTube uh, 
people, you know, artists on there that do the paint pouring so that you can be directed uh, to their uh, videos and see how they use some of this stuff. So I'm still, you know, figuring it all out. Uh, the last pour that I did, where is it now? Oh, it's under here. The most recent one that I did, the skin that I made, is with the, the homemade mix. And I actually like it a lot. It feels a lot uh, more supple and smooth. This one has a little bit more lumps and bumps. It's still usable, but uh, this one also has a little bit of cracking in here. And I got none no cracking whatsoever in these uh, skins that I made with the homemade uh, medium, okay? All right, so let's see, what else? Um, I've got a couple different methods that I'm just going to play with with you guys uh, to show you. And, oh, I've got copper discs. I've already got some round copper discs that I'm going to use. And what I've found in the short time that I've been doing this is that it's good to prep these uh, copper discs by just giving them a coat of white paint, just white acrylic paint first. And I'll show you how I use them. But that, that helps to have the paint stick. Um, these aren't quite dry. I painted them just a little while ago. But I think I'll go ahead and I'll paint a couple more, and they can dry as we are uh, speaking. It's uh, not rocket science. It's just a little bit of paint on the discs. And I'm not punching my holes yet. I will do that after I after they dry. Um, and before I resin them. It probably would be a better idea to clean your um, discs first. I can see this one might have had a little bit of uh, finger oils or something on here, so the paint's not sticking quite as well, but it will still work. Okay, so we'll let those dry. Whoa! That was weird. Okay. All right. Oh, I can see I'm pixelating pretty bad. You guys with me? Okay. Hi, Pam. <laughs> The pedal porn yesterday. Yeah, you missed it. You missed the original um, post that Holly did. Um, it, it was pretty. <laughs> it was pretty wild. Oh dear! I just flipped my my paint over. Let's fix that a little bit. Okay. All right. Are you guys seeing real uh, pixelated? Seeing me real pixelated? Because that's how I'm looking right now. Keeps interrupting. Crap. Oh. Nobody else is on the internet. We just might not have a great connection. Well, that's a drag. Yeah, I see it's frozen. Why does that happen? Well, I'm going to keep plugging along and um and hopefully hopefully it'll be okay. Hopefully it'll work its way out. Okay. I'm sorry guys. I don't know. I don't know why that happens. Okay. Just hang on a minute. 
see if it works its way out. I'm back. I'm back. Let's hope I stay back without all the pixelating. Okay. All right. So I painted those discs and now I'm going to prepare some paints. Um, I should have had probably some more paper toweling. All right. Let's see. What I'm going to do is um, I've already poured out a few paints and um, oh, the screen looks pretty good now. I've poured out a few paints and I took these graduated or, or marked mixing cups and um, they are marked or they're like embossed so um, you can see the measurements, but I went ahead and I just put some little black lines on there uh, just to help me see a little bit better while I'm on screen here with you guys. And what I did, what I did was I measured, um, I think it's like two and a half ounces or not ounces, but uh, grams, milliliters. I don't know what it is. Two and a half on here. And then I'm going to put double that of the flow trawl. I, I put the flow trawl in this flow trawl here. I put this in a smaller container that I used. I poured it through one of these tea strainers because I don't know if you can see inside the tea strainer, but there's like some little lumps in here. And I want to keep those out of the paint. So if you have like a, an old pair of pantyhose, I know, like who wears those anymore? But if you have a pair of pantyhose or knee highs or something that you're not using anymore, uh, you can cut a piece of that and put it over the top of your bottle of Floetrol. And then you can kind of um, strain any lumps in there. But that's what I'm using this little tea strainer for because I don't have any pantyhose. Uh, so, yeah, so I don't want to have the lumps in there, okay? So, I'm going to um, put the Floetrol in my paints. This one I already did. So, I'm going to just pour in the Floetrol up to that second line. So, it's actually one part paint, two parts Floetrol. That is the ratio. This is strictly using the flow trawl, not the homemade pouring medium. And then uh, I'll show you what the pouring medium consists of. And give that a little mix. It's easier to see with that little line that I marked. Just mix up your paints real well. If you have any questions or comments while I'm doing this, feel free to post. If I can answer, I will. If I can't, I will try to find out the answer for you. All right, so you want to just mix it up. You'd think that that flow trawl would really alter the color of the paint, but they stay pretty true uh, to, uh, to what you squeezed out. Oh, and one other key ingredient that I didn't mention is silicone. Uh, I guess I didn't mark this one. Oh, yeah, I did. I see it. The silicone, by adding a drop or two of silicone into your paint, helps make all the little cellular um, uh, effects on your painting that are, are really cool. I love to see a lot of cells 
uh, in the paint pours. I think they, they just look awesome. So make sure that you've mixed all your paints really well. I'm just going to go with these colors for now, for this pour, and then maybe I'll change them up a little bit uh, on a future one. Okay, so I have white. So I have six colors right here. I have so much stuff laying around. Ugh. All right, I probably should put gloves on. I've got a little paint on already on my fingers, but um, it's going to get a lot worse. All right, let me find that silicone. Where did it go? Here it is. My husband had some in his shop, so I haven't bought any yet. Um, this is actually... Um, silicone that was made for a treadmill to lubricate a treadmill uh, they do have this um, it's in a different container but they do have this on amazon as well i don't know where else you can find it but um i have a link to it uh, on the group page if you want to get some so i'm going to just put like a drop in each of my paints Less is more in this case. You might think that adding more silicone would give you more cells, but it actually um, it, it, it actually does not work well. It actually is going to give you a, less of the effect that you want. So you mix that silicone, silicone in there real well. That's what makes the paint move well it doesn't make the paint move but that's what gives the cellular action in the paint and like i said there's other people uh in these videos like no two people did the same thing for everybody that i watched so similar but not the same your consistency wants to be pretty runny but not like water but more like maybe cream something like that all right, so now what I'm going to do, there's just so many different things to show you. Uh, I, I think what I'll do is I'll just pour, I'll make a pour, uh, what they call a dirty pour, which is basically putting all your colors in a cup and then dumping it and watching everything spread out. So I'm going to start with some white. And you kind of try to figure out your pattern, uh, how you want it. Although when you're first starting out, you don't really know what you want and you don't know if you can achieve it. Pour also kind of pour um, a stream like kind of high up. So that way the force of the, the water or the paint going into the paint kind of makes it go down further than just lay on the surface. So it gives it more force. Okay. If that makes any sense. Okay, and I'll do a little bit of yellow. And then I will do some orange. I love orange. I love orange and turquoise together. And I've got some metallic paint and some just regular. I th this turquoise is, is a metallic paint. And uh, this other one is a little bit lighter, but it is not but you can use either one. Okay, so you've got your paints in there. Then you could add another layer all over again if you wanted. Um, I may do that because I think I have a lot of white on the bottom and I don't want so much white. So I'll put, put a little more purple. A little bit more blue. 
Got the yellow. A little more orange. Oh, and then the lighter blue. Okay. So I'm going to let that sit for just a minute. And see how you get you get paint right away all over you. Then you need something to turn your cup over with, which I don't really have. As much as I think I'm set up properly for these things, there's always something I forget. Without fail. Well, let's see here. I think what I'll do is I'll just cut a piece of manila folder that I have handy. Oh, there was something in there. I hope it was nothing important. Probably not. Okay. All right, so you can see... Can you see? <clears throat> the uh, the paint's kind of doing a little bit of something in there. And now I have a tray with a silicone mat on here. The silicone mat is just that. It's a skinny, or thin, I should say, a thin silicone mat. Good for lots of different crafts. Um, they clean up pretty good, and nothing sticks to them. So that's kind of neat. All right, let's see here. All right, so I'm going to take my paint cup. And I think I want to pour a little bit of white paint just as a little base. Because I've seen somebody do it, and it looked like it was worth doing. So I'm just going to make a little bit of a base. Uh, this one lady, I think she's from Waterfall Acrylics. I like her a lot uh, on YouTube. And um, she's got a lot of handy tips. She calls this her pillow. Uh, I'm not really sure why, but that's what she calls it. Okay. So now I'm going to, this is a flip cup. Uh, it's a, called a flip cup, but it's a dirty pour. You got me why they call these things the way they do. All right, so I'm going to, Turn that upside down. That wasn't good. And put it there. Okay. I'm going to let it sit for just a quick second. Look how pretty that is on the paper. I'm going to let it just sit there for a quick second. And lift the cup. And voila. Let the magic happen. I'll let some of this drip out. You do not want to mix this paint with your craft stick. You you if you don't if you do that, you'll just mix it all and it'll just be a mucky mess. So you want to let all the individual colors have their space and um and spread out. It'll take a little bit of time for it to spread out. But isn't that cool? So you can, at this point, you can take, uh, you could let it sit like this and just let it sit on its own, or you can uh, tip your tray around and help it to move and spread out. That also spreads your colors out. Sometimes if you get, um, a lump of one color in an area and another area that's kind of bland, you can kind of move the paint around to uh, spread it out a little bit. You can also take a hair dryer and spread it out with the hair dryer. That um, let, let's let's just do that, okay? Actually. There's also a torch involved in here. 
you can take a torch and pop out any bubbles and it also creates helps to bring out the cells in the paint but you don't want to stay on it very long you want to just give it a little bit of oomph with with the uh, with the torch okay now we could take a hair dryer on cool you don't want it hot on cool and you can it has to be on high. There we go. And really spread it out and give it a whole different appearance. This is probably better to do this on um, on a uh, canvas more so than to make a skin but uh, you know you can play around with it that's the fun of this art form is that you can play with it that kind of doesn't look good But yeah, if you mix if you mix stuff up with your uh, craft stick, it can be a mess. So, just saying, that's you get a whole different look. This that's on here is really cool. I wish I could save that. But not so much. Okay. All right. So that's one way to make a skin. All right. I'm not sure I care for these particular colors, the way they spread out. It looked cooler before I did that with the hairdryer. Oh, the pixelating. Oh, that just looks caca. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys. All right, it's straightened out a little bit now. Okay. Anyway, that's one method. You can really, with the hair dryer, I've watched some of the videos, you can really stretch it out and um, it just takes on a whole different look. Uh, and for a canvas, that's kind of cool. All right, so that's one way. I'm also going to show you on a Lazy Susan. So I'm going to make another pour. I'm going to use the same cup. I haven't done this before, so maybe I'll regret it. I don't know. But I'll do another pour. And on that one, I'm also going to um, dip the, um, the copper discs in. And I'll show you how to do that. So yeah, this is this is just to me it's mesmerizing. Maybe it's just that I'm easily entertained. I don't know, um, but I really enjoy it. Okay. Let's see, put a little more orange. A little more, oh, the darker blue, tur turquoise. This is the metallic turquoise. Oh, I did that. A little more purple. and the light turquoise. Okay. All right, I'm gonna let that sit for a minute. And I'm gonna show you, this is the, uh, the copper disc. 
and I'm going to take some painter's tape. I'm going to make myself a tab to hold on to the uh, disc while I dip it into the paint. All right, so on the reverse side of the copper, I'm going to, oh, I pressed the, um, the painter's tape so that I made a little tab and I'm just going to stick that down onto the copper. Press it on real good. And then I'm going to get myself set up here because once I flip them, they're not going to fit in there. That's too big. What can I use that I did not think of this already? That might be a little bit too big. That'll work. Um, save, you know, if you're like me, save, um, save little bottle tops, even little, like, pop bottles, uh, caps. You can save those just as little props to prop your things up. So I'll do this and get these ready so that I can dip them into the paint once I do the next pour. And I'm going to do the pour, this this one, on a Lazy Susan and spin the paint a little bit and we'll see how that looks. Just for the heck of it. Okay. Alright, let's see about these other two because I may do a few more. Since I've got the paint and I have plenty of copper. Just kind of hard to do with gloves on. Of course, I could take them off, but that would make too much sense. Okay. You know, Sonny, that is absolutely true. There are things that I've made that I wasn't crazy about. Um, but I went ahead and put them out when I have my sales or do my shows and put them out anyway because everybody likes different things. And inevitably, those things that I made that I didn't really care for all that much are like the first things that sell. It's like, go figure. But that's always a good thing. So don't underestimate how things come out. Uh, don't judge it. Because somebody else may like it, fall in love with it, and that's cool. Alright, so this paint has been sitting for a little bit. I'm going to move the camera over to my Lazy Susan area. Okay. All right. I've got this set aside here. Make sure you keep that in a level, level place, so the paint doesn't drip, uh, doesn't slide. And on here. You can see this is just a ceramic tile that I got at the hardware store. And this is one of the Lazy Susan attachments. I don't know what you want to call it, but it's a part that you can get at a hardware store. And I just glued it to the back of the ceramic tile so it makes it makes a Lazy Susan. <clears throat> so it spins. And I covered it with some um, 
some of that uh, press and seal um, plastic wrap. And then um, I had bought a, a two pack of the silicone mats, so I cut the second one up and um, put it on top of here on the tile. But what I'm going to do is I've got a second one. I'm going to do that one first. So then I can remove that tile or this piece and still have the uh, ability to spin it. You have to be careful. I set on my table a large piece of cardboard uh, to help with all the mess because if, if you can see over here, it's where I was spinning and uh, the paint kind of flies a little bit. So you want to make sure that you've got um, your area covered. You could put a piece of uh, plastic down, like a, a, I don't know, like a plastic tablecloth or something like that. You could put on the table to protect your surface. Um, you just want to get yourself set up for success. All right, so I'm going to flip this one over. And what I'm going to do with this is <clears throat> I'm going to try to spin it around a little bit, and then I will uh, just use the torch on it. And then I'm going to dip my little pieces of copper in the paint. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm just going to... Do this and pick up my tile like this. Flip my cup. Let it sit for a minute so the paints can kind of flow down. Get these things set up. I hope you guys can see this okay. I should check if I need to move the camera. Now, there's different ways that people release the paint, too. Some of them kind of move the cup up and down uh, to get different effects. I haven't gotten all that fancy with mine, but um, I will just kind of let it go. See if there's any more that comes out here without mixing it. And the cells are starting to form. That's courtesy of the silicone. All right, so I'm going to give it a spin. You got to be careful with the spinning, guys, because <laughs> you can spin the paint right off. Um, and you can knock it up. Look at the nice cells on here. They're coming along really nice. Okay, so yeah, that's doing great. Now I'm going to I'll just give it another little spin. All right. Let's move it around a little bit. Now I'm going to take one of my little... Um, Copper discs. I'm going to find an area that I want to get some paint off of and kind of push it in there a little bit and pull straight up. And there you have it. Cool, huh? All right, so 
Now I want to set this where it's not going to fall over. So where will I do that? That part I didn't think out ahead of, of time very well. But I'm going to use my little uh, bottle cap caps and we'll do that. All right. I'm going to do an orangey area here. That one I don't like so much. So let's. There. That's much better. Okay. Oi, oi, oi. Put that on something there. Let me see if I can find something else real quick. Probably not, because... Oh, there's one more bottle cap. I was thinking I could use those little um, paint cups or condiment cups, but they're not big enough. All right. So I'm going to, oh, I didn't torch this one. Let's see if we can bring out some more cells. And yes, I'm torching right on top of the silicone. But the idea is that you're not on it very long. But the, the torch flame brings out a little bit more cellular action. Well, that's nice. Okay. And let's do one more. Ooh, I like that one. Also, cool, huh? All right. All right. There's also, I didn't do it um, because there's just so many different things. If you have a cookie cutter, like a round cookie cutter, um, you could, before you do your pour, you can actually build all your colors within this cookie cutter and then lift it and let everything go too. So that's just another way. Um, you know, I have enough paints. I could go ahead and do that. Um, I could probably do that. Let's see. I'm touch this up just a bit. A little more torch. When you're uh, using the torch on your paints, you should have uh, an exhaust fan or a fan blowing just because you could get a little bit of fumes and you don't want that. So you don't want to be breathing anything that's possibly harmful. All right, so I have four of those right there. Let's see if I can move those. But let's, let's go ahead and build one like this. Um... Because you know it's all about it's all about experimenting. But look at how this is already changing so much. This one that I just poured. And this, like I said before, if you give this two or three days, it'll dry completely, and then you can just peel uh, peel it off of the silicone mat. So that's that's pretty awesome, right there. All right, so let's do. Let's do this. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more white paint and a little bit of Floetrol. And we'll pour in here and see. I haven't done this before, guys, so this will be uh, an experiment for sure. Uh, 
and we'll see what happens. I don't have that much of some of these colors in here, so let me put a little bit more in. I've got plenty of yellow. I could use a little more blue and a little more purple. And this I'm just throwing in by idea. So what can I say? That's how I roll. Okay. A little bit more of that. And where was the light blue? Oh, I put the light blue in, didn't I? No, it's the purple I look, I'm looking for. Purple. Purple Durple. Okay. All right, so a little bit more Floetrol. Ratios two to one. Mix, mix, mix. This is still enough of these colors. All right. So, here we go with this. Yeah, I'm thinking it might just seep out from the bottom, but we'll see what happens. All right, so this is on the other Lazy Susan. And we'll pour some white. Let's do some of this. You know, I should probably add one more drop of silicone since I added uh, paint. I'm going to add a little bit of silicone, just one more drop in the purple. We'll see if that does anything. <clears throat> All right. I love this burnt orange color. I really love it. And, you know, there's no rhyme or reason, really, to the colors that I picked. I mean, it's just colors I like. Um, but you can experiment with different colors. And the craft paints are cheap, um, especially if you would get them, you know, on a sale or something like that. But you know, they're less than $2 a, a, a color, so that's not bad. And I use them for other things on occasion, too, so maybe just another dab of white. Not too much white to me. But it's not coming out. I thought maybe it would. So actually, I might like this better than, than uh, the flip cup. But that's why I thought I'd save a few things, you know, to show you guys and do them with you because uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with all the skins that I've been making. It's basically to show you guys how, it, how I do it, um, but you can do whatever you want. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You know, I think I'm just going to go for all the rest of the paint that I have left because I've got nothing else to do. I'm not going to do any other pours uh, because then we'll move on with doing the resin on here. So I'll just use up the paint.
I don't know. I'm having fun. I don't know about you guys, but, but I, uh, I enjoy doing this kind of stuff, even though it's messy. Uh, I always like playing with something new. This might be too much for this little square of silicone that I have it set on, but we'll find out. More white. And a little more purple. Okay, that'll do that. I'm going to let it sit for a minute. Yeah, you can do these uh, on a ceramic tile, even, um, and um, you could display it somewhere. Uh, you can cover these with uh, uh, resin also, or you could just totally spray them with uh, the acrylic spray. So you can preserve it that way. You can also, oh, look how the cell development the cell development has really uh, progressed. Sometimes as they sit, they take a little while to, uh, to develop. But you could also, if you wanted to, um, you could play around with like a toothpick or something and you could uh, draw a design in a certain area. Oh, this skin is already drying on here. I think that was because of the torch. But um, I took, let me do it on one of these little ones. Let's see. I can kind of make little, maybe there's not enough paint on here to do that. But you can make kind of like little, um, little flares on here with a toothpick. This one doesn't show it up very well, but if you understand, if you get what I'm saying. Um, I actually did that on a tile that I was experimenting with. Let me grab it over here. And I just did them in the corner of a tile just for the heck of it, where I just kind of swirled it with a toothpick over here. If you can see those little areas. So I think, you know, there's there's a lot of room for playing around with this stuff too, you know, to, to make it look a little bit different. But that's a ceramic tile that I just did it like that. I don't know if I'll ever use it for anything, but uh, just to kind of play, just to kind of experiment. I did one on a canvas. I can't say that I'm crazy about the colors at all. This was on a canvas that I had. This was, um, I think, not a good mix. And I I guess I was too heavy with the blue because I, I don't care for this at all. But um, it looks kind of, I don't know, like bad skin. <laughs> it just looks kind of pockmarked all over. So, But that's how you learn. Okay, so this has sat long enough. And I will lower the camera down here, and we'll see what happens. Ooh. Holy guacamole. Well, I hope that moves a little, but the outer, the outer looks real good. I don't know if I should do this or not, but I always, I'm one of these people that can't leave well enough alone, so you get what you get. Maybe I better drop a little, because that's just too much purple right there. And we'll spread it around a little bit. The outer edges 
seem to develop cellular uh, little cells pretty quickly. It's funny because I put a little more silicone in that dark turquoise. Maybe I should not have done that. I don't know. I'll go ahead and give this a spin and we'll see if it changes anything. Too heavy of those colors in the center, in the center, in my opinion. Ooh, look at that. The outer edges are great, but I don't care for the center. But it could change after it sits a little while. It can change a little bit, and I need to torch it yet, too. Now, some of the videos that I watched on YouTube, um, some of the uh, pores that people had made, you know, they weren't real happy with at first. And then as they sat, they really seemed to change quite a bit. And, um, and then they turned out beautiful. But here's the other thing, too. If you're making these for skins... Uh, and not using it for, you know, artwork on the wall, you can pick and choose where you want to use um, that area for a skin. I'm living dangerously here. But I really want to stretch out that center if I can. See, when you, when you mix, when you try to, to pick up colors, they all kind of blend together, and then they look like caca. So, and pretty much all the paint came off of this. I was going to see if I could salvage just a little bit of other color. Some of the areas on this piece look pretty cool. All right. All right, let me get my torch. Like I said, not much, not much heat. I'm going to leave that go because there are certain areas in here that I think are pretty cool. I don't care for this area in here too much, but um, for the most part, it's not bad. Let's check on the other one. This is still doing great. In our first one, I just have a, I blew this one out with the hairdryer, if you remember. And so a lot of white uh, is on here, which... I'm not real partial to. A lot of the other colors got kind of buried in there. But, you know, it's all live and learn. All right, so let's move along. I've got my other, I've got my pieces, you know, set like this for my pendants. Four of them. And these are going to just have to be left undisturbed for at least a day. They're not as um, as dense as the other pores. So I'm 
Yeah, I mean, you can you can see a lot of different things. You can read a lot of different things into um, the paint as it's moving like that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is show you a couple of things. Um, we're going to use a skin. I'm going to use a skin. All right. And then I was going to make a pour of the um, of the pouring medium too, a mix of it to see that. Um, now these are two that I had already done, uh, and they're dry, and I cleaned the backs off because you know inevitably you'll get paint on them, so you clean the back and the edges, and then I punched a hole in them. Now I did punch the hole before I'm going to pour the um, UV resin on it, uh, but that's not really a problem. The, the resin may go through the hole just a little bit, but I'm going to take a toothpick and kind of clean that out and then pop it in the uh, UV lamp and it'll be fine. I did try to uh, pop a hole in this after it had the resin cured on there, and then what I did is when I... Uh, made the hole, it cracked the uh, resin. So that didn't work. So just just letting you know that. All right, and I do have a bezel cup here. Not a bezel cup, a, a bezel. This is um, one by, uh, oh, what's the name of it? It's Susan Leonard Kasmer's uh, Ice Resin Media Mixage, that's the name of it, the Media Mixage. I don't think that these are in production anymore. If, uh, if, if you can find them, that's cool. Uh, I've got several packages still that I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with, but uh, I broke one open here today to show you uh, how to put a skin in here. And uh, I drew out a little template for the inside, and I'm going to pick out an area that I want to uh, to use and I think I'm gonna go over here but what I'm really gonna do is turn this over and just trace the outline that might be a little dark I would really like to be able to make these to look like Fordite if you know what that is um, I just think that is uh, very cool and Fordite is basically just car paint uh, from the Ford company. You know, all the different, oh, this is right out, uh, all the different pours of paint that they did on cars um, until it made kind of like, I mean, they didn't make a Fordite on purpose. That was just a end product, and somebody figured out what to do with it, of all the different layers of paint. And then they um, made cabochons with that, which is kind of cool. So I just traced that, and this cuts real nice. Just trim that all up. Yeah, that's going to fit. That's going to fit in there. So what I'm going to do is just put, um, I think what I'll do is just put a little bit of UV resin as a glue. I bought this UV resin on Amazon too. I've used it for many, many things. Um, I prefer the two-part uh, resin, uh, but sometimes you need something quicker, and uh, and this does a good job. So I'm going to just put a little bit in the bezel. 
I mean, you could make bezels, but, you know, that's kind of a lot to do for an acrylic skin. But, you know, if you like doing it, that's that's fine, too. Um, I'm just spreading a little bit. I've got to close this cap. Just spreading a little bit, just enough for the paint skin to adhere. And lay my paint skin in. Press it all in. I'm going to use the other side of that little stick to get my edges down. It would help if I had my magnifiers on. Just want to press that all down. And, you know, I'm going to stick it in the UV lamp. I don't know if that's really going to do anything since this is on top of it, but um, I'm going to do it anyway. Okay. I hate that feeling when you get resin on your fingers. It's kind of yucky. All right, so I have my resin. I'm just going to put that in my lamp right there. Oh, I see I'm pixelated again. Darn it. This resin wiped up. My little work mat is getting worn out. Messed up. So yeah, I um, I think you know that if you had a a channel a channel um, cuff that you could cut strips in there and put that in there too. Uh, maybe there's some other use that you could um, benefit with you know benefit by with this stuff. But I think that's pretty fun. All right, and then as Another step, I will go ahead and put um, the resin on these two pieces and let's see here, these are a little bit high. I'll put the resin on these two pieces and put them under the lamp like this and then what I'll do uh, to finish up is I'll make a um, a batch of this pouring medium and show you how I do that, which I got off of a YouTube video too. So it's not original to me. It's not my creation, but I do like the way this skin feels. It doesn't have all those lumps and bumps like the other uh, ones that I made. So, and this is made with the homemade pouring medium. So we'll do that. But like I, I think I said before, once your skins are dried, <clears throat> then I put them on. This is what I do. I'll show you. Too much stuff here. I put them on a piece of cardboard, prop them up on a couple of... Uh, craft sticks. And I'll just put some craft sticks in the um, in the box. Put my skin on top of it. I'll put several more craft sticks underneath so it's not laying flat on the uh, cardboard. And then I use uh, this Kemar uh, varnish by Krylon. I know it's backwards. And I take this outside and I spray it, give it a good spray, and let it dry. And then, then it's good to go. All right. So, but it's pretty stinky, so you want to do that outside. All right. Okay, so now I went ahead and I put that in there. 
And I'm going to pour some resin on here. On a thick piece like this, uh, it's probably best to do this in a couple of couple of pours layers. Let it all settle. Get that schmutz out of there. Okay. And on here, I'm just propping these up. If I had more bottle caps, well, here's one. I would... I would use the bottle caps since they don't take up so much space. I found this little tray, you know, I've had it for years and years, and I think it was like a little set of four that I probably got at a dollar store, um, and I've not been able to find them since. I looked on Amazon, um, and uh, I would like to have a few more of these. They are really handy when I'm doing... Uh, stuff in the in the light box and probably for other things too ah i'm going to be covered in resin now like i had said earlier um the resin the uv resin tends to pull away from the edges of your piece and that's why they need to be sealed but even when I've sealed a few, it seemed like the uh, edges still pulled back a little bit. And what I did was, after the first curing, then I took some of that Camar var varnish and uh, sprayed some in a little bottle cap. And... Um, Oh, I need a toothpick. This is too big. I sprayed it in that little uh, bottle cap. There we go. Get rid of that hole there. And then painted some of that varnish on the edge where it had pulled back. But from what uh, I've been reading on some of these videos, uh, they say that if you're using a two-part epoxy, that that's not usually an issue. I'm going to go ahead and stick that in right away. Hopefully the edges don't pull before it gets cured. And also with the, uh, with the UV resin, um, you have to set, the, set it back in the... Um, I don't think I had my camera on where you could see what I was doing. Um, you have to keep turning the uh, UV lamp back on you know let it, it it's only I think it only goes for a minute and 20 seconds something like that and then it shuts off the light shuts off and there's no way to program it to to go any longer um, so I just have to repeatedly stick it back in and let it go a little bit longer uh, it should probably get at least a good 10 minutes of light cure um, to um, totally set and cure yeah, the same thing with this, too. This resin wants to pull off. And I really did give it a good coat of that uh, spray varnish. So, but we'll, we'll work around that. I want to try to get it as smooth as possible as well. and the light is the same kind of 
light that you would use for uh, doing your nails. This just doesn't want to stay on, does it? It's got to have enough in there, I guess, to, to stay on. Okay, and the metal gets warm. I, I thought I would be smart and hold this under the, the light one day, and all of a sudden it's like, wow, it's hot. So that wasn't a good idea. So let me check this out. Yep, that's already. I'm going to put it back in there for another, another time. Close this resin up. You know, there's a product, oh, there's a product online, now I can't think of the name of it, let me grab it, Bondic, Bondic is the name, and we had bought this, we bought a couple of them, but we had bought this to, to do little repairs, and it's, it's basically, uh, the same thing as this resin and it has this little tiny light in there but these these suckers are like I don't know almost thirty dollars for that and there's not that much stuff in them they, it comes with an extra little tube uh, a little well I take that back it doesn't this one just I think you can get them with refills but there there's only this much space where this resin is in here and um, I tried, I thought, well, why not try the, uh, this resin in, in the tube when it was empty and it works just as well. So it, they've come in pretty handy uh, to repair little things. My husband initially bought it for something in his shop. And uh, we've been since refilling them with this liquid resin. All right, I'm going to put that back in there. And give that another go. And if you're, if the hole does fill up in um, in your piece, you can drill that out with a drill carefully. As long as your resin's not too thick, you shouldn't have a big problem with that. All right, let me look at questions here. Well, Gina, I'm not sure, you know, but I know that I got some of the resin around the edge of the bezel, so I know that that would cure, and I'm thinking possibly maybe with the heat and the other resin, uh, maybe it'll work. I did that on, on the other resin, uh, the other bezel, and it didn't seem to uh, cause any kind of problem with it, so I don't know. It's just kind of an experiment that I tried, but you could if you were... Had more time uh, and been patient, uh, which I was not because I wanted to show you guys this. Um, I would probably just use some Elmer's glue or something in there or Mod Podge or something to, to glue it down and let it dry and then put the UV resin over it. And Sunny, uh, I sprayed I sprayed the, the skins, but then you have to let them thoroughly dry before you're going to cut them up. So, um, let's see here. So you spray it with the varnish and then use it in the bezel and put resin on top and then put that in. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, this is a whole separate thing. You, you spray this first, let it dry, then you can cut it up and then you would, um, glue it into your bezel, let that dry and then you put your resin on top. Is that any better, clearer, I hope? All right, let's see here. Okay, so while this is curing, I'll mix up a batch of the homemade pouring medium that that I learned about. Let me grab another paper towel. All right. 
<coughs> excuse me. All right. So to make the homemade recipe, let me grab my paper. This will be on the last page of your handout. And the recipe is for an eight ounce bottle, which where is it? Where did it go? I swear these things walk away on me. Oh, here, it's hiding behind the flow troll bottle. That's why I couldn't see it. So what you need for the homemade uh, pouring medium recipe is you need Elmer's glue all, not school glue. It has to be glue all. If you don't get that, it's not the right product to use. So you need Elmer's glue all. You need Floetrol. You need the Liquitex flow medium and some water. Uh, the lady that does that is from Dryer Art Studio. She's got the recipe. I've given her credit on the handout. And she uses what she calls spring water, which is just bottled water. Uh, I just happen to have some distilled water. And I think the reason she does that is because, you know, maybe well water or other waters, city waters or whatever, might have some other things in it that might conflict. I don't know. But... That's what she uses, so that's what I'm doing. I've got an eight ounce squeeze bottle. I already had pouring medium in this, so I'm gonna pour some more in there. I am going to mix four ounces. Well, she, she suggests five and a half ounces, so I'm gonna get close to that. I already have some school glue. This is a two ounce container right here. So I'm going, I'm going to take the top off because that's ridiculous trying to squeeze that out. Ah, and that's ridiculous what I just did. All right, so I'm going to pour that in there. So that's two ounces. I should have a funnel. I don't have one here. And I do have funnels, but don't have one right here. All right, so I'm going to pour this two ounces in. I should have still kept my gloves on because now I have resin all over my fingers too. All right, so that's the two ounces there. And I'm just going to start a new bottle because I don't want to wait for all of that. It won't go to waste, folks. I'm sure my grandson will take care of all of this <laughs> when he comes over here. My husband's on his way to pick him up from day camp. So then all hell will break loose when he's here because he is, he loves to goof around with stuff too. I think grandma's been a, I wouldn't say a bad influence in his life, but um, a very messy influence in his life. So I'm going to put half of this in here. All right. So we'll put that in there. I don't know why Elmer's glue, but you know, it's, it's, these people are painters. They've been doing this stuff a long time. So they are more in the know than I am. All right. Now the Floetrol, I had already put it in another bottle because I strained this one already. The Floetrol is, oh, I think it's one and a half ounces. Yes. One and a half ounces of Floetrol. But make sure that you shake it really well. 
and this is a two ounce cup so I'm going to put all of that in there so I didn't fill it quite full but there again I eyeballed that and then the Liquitex Flow Aid is right here and this is a half an ounce that in there that does not look like enough to fill the bottle I have to recheck that and then she said about a quarter cup of spring water so I'm gonna put this in there she filled that bottle right up so I must have something off whack with her measurements is what I'm referring to although I think I was a little shy on the glue I was so I'm gonna add just a little bit more my bad all right she also says that the measurements don't have to be exact on this so uh, it's my story and I'm sticking to it but honestly she had it filled all the way to the top with her measurements And then label your bottle. Lab label your bottle, you know, pouring medium or PM. Um, and then when you shake it really well to, to mix it up. And then when you go to use it, make sure you sh shake it up again really well uh, before you mix this. So this would be in lieu of just the flow trawl. This has got the other ingredients in here. And I honestly, I thought it was a great mix, okay? So I'm going to double check on those proportions, but I thought I wrote it down right. It just seems a little bit shy um, of the bottle. So you would mix all your, you know, all your little colors you'd put in your cup. And then it's um, two parts, one part paint, two parts pouring medium is her recipe. Okay, so let's see here. These are just a tad bit tacky. I just feel it on the edge so I'm not making any fingerprints. I'm going to fill more resin in on here and, uh, and cure these a little bit longer and then they'll be done. I'll post them tonight in the, um, in the group page, excuse me, so you can see the finished products. I'll um, show you the the pores how they're drying that we did on the tiles this was the last one it's looking better I like I said before I'm not crazy about this heavy purple here in the center but there's lots of usable space in my opinion uh, around the perimeter so that's the one that's the last one and this was the middle one. I like this one more. I think that's nice. And the paint does still move a little bit. I can see it moving a little bit. Um, that's up to you how much you want to play with it, you know, with the movement to see how the, um, um, how the paint flows, you know. Let's see here. Is anyone else getting constant interruptions? You mean the 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 uh, broadcast is stopping? Well, I don't know. You guys can let Deb know if that's the case. If that's what you meant, Deb. Or are you getting constant interruptions by people in your household? Because <laughs> that happens a lot over here. Um, anyway, that's pretty much it for my demo on this. Um... And I hope that if you play around with this, you'll post whatever you do. It's, it's not horribly expensive to, uh, to throw all this stuff together, 
the like I said, the flow trial is a lot less expensive if you get it at the hardware store than if you bought it on Amazon. Uh, and the paints are, like I said, under two bucks at the uh, craft store. Probably the most expensive thing is the Liquitex Flow Aid if you choose to go that route. Um, but um, I could not find this on Amazon. I got this at Michael's. Joann's didn't have it. But you could do a search and see where you can find it. Uh, I don't know about Hobby Lobby. Uh, I don't live close to one, so that's not usually an option for me. Um, okay, I think I think that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching this, watching me make a mess. Now to go clean all my my hands all up. That'll be a challenge. Um, but like I said, I'll post these uh, things later on after they're cured properly. And um, that way you can see how they turned out. And next week, I'm going to do something different. Um, I am going to have a guest. A guest host uh, here at my studio. Uh, and she is... She doesn't live too far away from me, a little bit of a drive, but she is a wonderful artist and uh, she does a lot of silverware jewelry, flatware, spoon rings, that kind of stuff. And I've been dabbling with those a little bit. Um, I bought my uh, ring vendor from Peppy Tools and I've made a few rings like that. She has a different system that she uses. Uh, but she's going to come over uh, uh, before the broadcast, and we're going to play around a little bit and share some ideas. And hopefully, you know, it'll all go well, and you'll learn how to make a spoon ring by the end of the, the demo. So uh, I've been collecting flatware for a while. Um, you can find it uh, at antique shops, thrift stores, uh, silver-plated. If you're lucky enough to find sterling silver, that's wonderful. But learn learn how to do it on silver plate before uh, before you venture with real you know full silver. But um, don't get stainless steel. Don't buy stainless steel flatware because it's much harder uh, to do to work with. Um, just get go with silver plate, and I think. You know, if we have time, I'll go over how to clean it. Uh, there again, that's just stuff I've learned on the internet, uh, how to clean the silver plate. And um, and then we'll cut a few rings and make a few rings. And uh, uh, you can see if you like that too. But I'm trying to think of different things to present to you guys. So, um, you know, I, I am no expert on that by any means. Um, but Nancy, uh, Nancy's going to be with me and... She'll give us some tips. Uh, I'll be learning along with you guys. And I think it should be fun. So I had a few spoon rings that I made um, at my last show. And um, I wish I would have had more because people were really looking at those. And I, I sold several of them. So I think uh, I'll make some extras. And I have another show in September, so... I'll put those out and see how they do. So, oh, oh, and next week I'm going to have to do the demo on Tuesday, not on Wednesday like our usual day. My grandson is off next Wednesday and the county fair is going to be going on. And so I'm going to have Max all day on Wednesday and we're going to the fair. So uh, I will remind you guys that it will be on Tuesday, uh, same time at 2.30 but we'll do the spoon ring demo then, and uh, I'll see you guys on the group. I also put a few links for some of the products that I used today on Amazon. I don't have a fancy schmancy um, website that you can go to, like some, some people that have a big higher membership. Uh, so I have to list the products singly on the group page. I hate doing that, but that's the only way that I can, can do that. So... Uh, if there's anything that um, you want to get, just go through those links, and uh, I'll get a little bit of a little bit of a credit. I'm telling you, it's small. 
So it's like you got to buy in volume to really get any money. <clears throat> so with that, I'll see you guys later on the web page or on the group page, I mean, and uh, see you next Tuesday. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.